The left-wing media gets it wrong so many times, it's really hard to keep track. But the new superstar at the podium is keeping them in check. CNN's Chris Cuomo said, show me where it says protesters are supposed to be peaceful. Um, well, I'd point him to the First Amendment, where it says that you have the right to, quote, peaceably assemble. He should go back and read the Constitution. I think, um, you know, you're asking the wrong question. The right question is, where did, where did the data... That's the question I want to ask, Haley. So please don't tell where me did, I'm asking right when I, the wrong And I answered question. your question once, but if you ask it twice, it doesn't make it any better of a question. And did anyone take it upon themselves to pose any questions about Michael Flynn and un unmasking the President Obama's spokesperson? Oh, not a single journalist has posed that question. You know, I was asked probably 12 questions about the Confederate flag, and I'm a little dismayed that I didn't receive one question on the deaths that we got in this country this weekend. Not one question. I didn't receive one question about five children who were killed. The president say to parents out there who are now going, okay, what do I do with my kids? Yeah, the president has said um, unmistakably that he wants schools to open. Uh, the science should not stand in the way of this. Of course, we can do it. Everyone else in the Western world, our peer nations are doing it. The science is on our side here. After that last exchange, CNN reporter Jim Acosta took to Twitter to take a jab at Kaylee McEnany with this. The White House press secretary on Trump's push to reopen schools, quote, the science should not stand in the way of this. Try again, Jim. We just saw the proof that you took her words out of context. Joining me now to set the record straight, White House Press Secretary Kaylee McEnany. All right, so Kaylee, everybody saw what you were saying is the science is on the side of opening schools and the science shouldn't get in the way of reopening schools because the science supports reopening schools. But then he comes out and reframes what you said to make you look bad. Do you ever just see him walking around and kind of stick a finger in his face and say, Jim, what the hell are you doing? Hey, I, I see him around, and he's actually quite nice off camera, which is interesting. But oh. look, it's it's an admission that they can't debate on the merits, Jesse. And look, this is the equivalent. If I was to say to you right now, there is no universe in which Jim Acosta engages in fake news, and you put up on your Chiron, Jim Acosta engages in fake news, it would be the exact opposite of what I said in exactly. selective editing. But that's exactly what Jim Acosta did. It was false, and it was wrong, which is why he corrected his tweet. You know, I've heard that about Jim. I heard when the cameras go off, he's a nice guy, and then the lights come up, and he's a total maniac. Um, a Dr. Heckle and, and Mr. Hyde situation. Another guy that's kind of uh, crossing you is Jonathan Carl. Now, he runs the whole White House Correspondents Association and deal, and he's really mad, Kaylee. He's mad. He doesn't like the way you run the briefings. He wrote this really angry column in the Washington Post, and he basically says... The, you open these briefings like you're doing a cable news monologue and you're really not doing your duty. You're not informing the public. What is your response to that? Yeah, he likes to talk about the public trust in his op-ed. Well, guess what I use my briefings for? I use my briefings to highlight issues the American people care about that they don't ask about. When have they asked me about police officers dying in our streets, children dying in the streets of Democrat cities? These are Democrat cities. Two individuals who died in CHOP, the Democrat Autonomous Zone. When have they asked about this? They don't ask about it, and it's why I look over the reporters directly at the camera and speak to the American people because these issues and these lives matter. And John Carl Carl, if he wants to determine how he wants to run the briefing, no one's stopping him from trying to become press secretary in a future administration. <laughs> he could have been press secretary for the last administration. That would have been <laughs> That's right. a better fit. Is he one of those guys that's nice when the cameras go off like Jim, or is he just mean all the time? Hey, John's nice, too. These guys, <laughs> a lot of them are very nice off the camera. All right, so it's a performance. I totally understand that. Now, you also got into it. You've been getting into it with lots of people recently, Kaylee. I guess the Chicago mayor hates you now. Her name's Lightfoot. You said, I guess she wasn't really doing her job. Let's listen to what you said. It is unacceptable, and under this president, he'll take action, and the derelict mayor of Chicago should step up and ask for federal help because she's doing a very poor job at securing her streets. All right, so then what did you, I think she tweeted, hey, Karen, watch your mouth. Yeah, Karen's that's right. supposed to be some, I guess, slang for a bossy middle-aged white woman. I don't know. You don't even look middle-aged. You look younger <laughs> than that. But um, what's your response to the mayor of Chicago? 
Yeah, my, my response is that I'm very upset about the violence in the streets of her city. You know, she's focused on words, but instead she should be focused on action because, you know, right now, uh, this weekend, what we'll see is uh, hopefully not, but what we've routinely seen are double digit numbers of people dying in her city. So she needs to focus on securing her streets. I understand the truth hurts. The president's written her a letter and offered her help, and she needs to take it because it's inexcusable when children die in the st Democrat run seat streets of Chicago. Uh, Mayor Light, Light, uh, Mayor Lightfoot, Lightfoot, excuse me, Foot, yeah. should be focused on that. Lightweight, Lightfoot, whatever Lightweight. you want to call it. I mean, it's <laughs> homicides are skyrocketing. I think they're having the deadliest year so far in 25 years. Yeah. So it's, it's not good to be uh, living in Chicago right now. So the president is pivoting to the economy after kind of a rough start to the summer. We're seeing things reopen. Um, he's wearing a mask now. We're going to talk about masks in the next segment. And in, in your opinion, looking forward to August and then September, what is the White House doing in order to bring this country back to full throttle? Yeah, a lot. Look, this is the jobs president. We're focused on phase four, uh, which will be a great bill, assuming the Democrats come to the table that give a tax break to middle income Americans, lower income Americans, a payroll tax holiday is what the president wants to see in that and more funding for our schools to reopen. Uh, you look at the vaccine, you have one vaccine that's entering phase three trial. This president has broken down barriers and paved the way to move forward uh, and to get through this pandemic and to restart the economy. It's a stark contrast to Democrats that want to lock our children in a way, keep them out of schools, uh, and they're ignoring the science, which says it's perfectly okay to do. Yeah, if you can get a vaccine and a tax cut within the next couple months, I think every single American would be thrilled with that news. All right, Kaylee right. McEnany, tangling with all sorts of characters all over the place. Stay safe out there. Thank you, Jesse.